time, one at a time is manageable. Side by side is a problem. I am unmanageable. <laughs> the unmanageable Mr. Ace the of Pyrite. <laughs> the unmanageable. That's it. Right, let's talk a little bit more about this game. The desk have obviously had loads of thoughts there. Great job, guys. But this one for me, super exciting. Virtus Pro, slow team. Yesterday I described them as a juggernaut, right? They are slow moving as they were punished by BDS on Cafe. But we're at a kind of stage where they were definitely beatable by teams that gave them a lot of things to figure out and work around throughout the round. The more hurdles they put before Virtus Pro, the more they struggled. That, for me, has to be the focus for Team Secret in this. Equally for Team Secret, when they've attacked into teams that have played things like Solus, they have really struggled to keep any utility up on the field, which for me is number one as the attacking team, especially on a map like Bank. It is absolutely massive. If you're running short on utility or on information, you're going to get punished by teams like Virtus Pro that can rat it out in corners, can take really confident gunfights, because if Virtus Pro are great at anything, it is most definitely their gun skill. Dan has put up numbers every single game he has played so far and I would be shocked if that changes at all today. I would agree with you. Uh, mechanical skill, gun skill, winning those fights is something that Virtus Pro are going to have to rely heavily on at times, I think. Um, you know, given what we saw yesterday, um, if Secret have taken anything away from that, which I am almost absolutely certain that they will have done had they watched it when it comes time for them to defend, they are going to sit back, they mm. are going to try and burn time, they are going to try and avoid those gunfights. So Virtus Pro, when they find them, need to be making sure that they win them. Um, but as Fresh quite rightly said, coming in here and a very fascinating point that I think is worth doubling down on this is a big first half for Team Secret um, you know yes we can talk all day about burning time against Virtus Pro starving them of seconds you know forcing them to lose those rounds as happened yesterday against G2 but if the damage has already been done because you haven't got your successful attacks, it's not going to matter too much how well you yeah. do that. So it's really important that Team Secret get themselves as good a start as they can here. For me, it's going to come down to pace as well. Another thing that Fresh picked up on yesterday is for Virtus Pro, their defences are often very, very close to sight. They're not really the kind of team to spread across the entire map as other more aggressive teams might like to do. I do think you'll see some roaming here. I mean, given the fact that hatches have been opened up, for example, they've reinforced up Janitor you will see them playing around on the upstairs at least for part of this round. Now, for me, one thing I'm keeping an eye on, and Virtus Pro should know about this because they bullied their opponents yesterday, BDS, in getting rid of these Goa Canisters super early on. Shepard inside a kitchen, three Goa Canisters gone to the hands of a Twitch. Groovy is on the Twitch in this round. If he can get inside a site early and look at doing a little bit of work down there to clear away ADSs, get rid of Goa Canisters, when they do clear out the Romans coming out from Virtus Pro, they're in a fantastic spot to be able to capitalize. All I will say is the actual Roaming out of Verse Pro already is quite dug in, though. Two of them howling around inside of an open area. Nothing too unstandard there. I know this really used to bother you, Tim, that teams would drop away, though, inside about 60 seconds. Just kind of like, what's the point, right? Well, no, what I'll say here is that this, what I used to criticise was using three or four reinforcements upstairs, castle barricades, mirror window, using a ton of utility Jammers, up there, yeah. and then dropping away after 30 seconds. That's not what Virtus Pro have done here. They've got a little bit of utility to help them there, but I think this is actually a much more manageable balance um, of keeping that map control, but not losing a lot of utility that would be useful on site after dropping away after 30 seconds. Um, so I, I think it's actually, I think it's fine. They haven't yeah. overcommitted to that hold. Well, here in this case, 60 seconds in, like magic, like clockwork, Tim. They are all back on site and Secret have now got full control of the top floor and the ground floor and can start thinking about what work needs to be done downstairs. Goodbye, Mr. Shock Drone. It's an unfortunate, untimely death. There is still one more available on the field here, but they really sorely needed to help get rid of things, like I said, those glow cancers on the downstairs, the ADSs, anything to weaken the defense out of Virtus Pro and give Team Secret more time in the execute is going to be critical to find out. I like this garage hold from Pasha, um, using the Azami down there, just showing the value of those Kiba barricades, able to peek out, have that extra You know cover. what's a bugger about um, it? I like that. What's a real annoying thing about it is, in terms of range utility, they probably won't have too much left to clear away these barricades. Yeah. So they're going to have to go up to them and hit them, you know, physically. The problem, therefore, being you've got a player who's hanging out top garage who so far is completely uncontested, who can just get you on the kind of foot angles long before you see him because he's a little bit closer to that angle. So I think it's going to be uncomfortable for Secret to push down Marble if they choose to go that way. Here they come. They're going to have to lean on things like frag grenades to be able to make this one work. Slevin might get punished by Pasha if he's not careful, though. 
Going to see the elevator drop coming from YZM, but there is a toxic babe that's been detonated in the doorway. Joystick just trying to make a gentle challenge as well. Doesn't want to overcommit. Groovy taking a little bit of damage elsewhere. It's in garage against those Kiba barricades. But what a big double from Slebin and Savage to open things up for versus two secret in. swarming over Sart here. There's the looking good. But then from deep, we have Dan picking up one, Dan. picking up two. YZN, he's getting that diffuser down though. They're going in for the plant, yeah. If he looks to his left, he'll find his man, but looks the wrong way. Blind by his scope and YZN finds his man. That could have been so different for Virtus Pro, but Team Secret off the back of the Decabi charging in through sights, secure round one. That is already a really big start for Team Secret. As we said, coming in, attacks are important. They want a minimum of three realistically, and they've just got themselves a big one. Primary sight done and dusted, and to be honest with you, it looked fairly comfortable. A couple of kills from Dan deep in vault there, uh, you know, round about those gold bars just popping up and down with the, the shotgun but he made a little bit of difficulty for them but not too much in fairness they still got the job done quite impressed with that attack from team secret really good start completely agree i mean for Virtus pro it's not like there were any real you know massively obvious glaring errors i like the setup with the azami i like the way that they base themselves around the site just secret when it came around to executing were pretty they, they acted with conviction they were pretty determined to get into certain locations to find kills it was quite fluid as well again seven i think spotting an opportunity on the decay and just charging his way through sight in towards orange and then going for the challenge on towards dan really broke virtus pro in half still a very close one that as we commented you know if not for the uh, the scope on the Alder, maybe that round goes very, very difficult differently where YZN does not get the kill onto the Maestro. We're going to move away from that site, though, Tim. They've opted not to try and repeat the basement. We're going in towards staff and open area where Castle is on the field. We had a good chat yesterday about Architects, Mira, Castle, Azami, how they can completely transform the way that you play some sites. With two of them on the field here, it is going to mean there needs to be some dynamic problem solving coming out of Team Secret. But on their side, Tim, I cannot ignore the fact that we have got a sense on side. It's always an interesting one to watch. Um, we do see, we saw a little bit of sense play uh, yesterday. Uh, used fantastically well. Fresh did a great breakdown, actually. I remember of how it was, uh, you know, deployed on board. Look at us being so nice to Fresh. I think we've mentioned him about four times so far. It's as if he's going to be joining the game at some point to talk to us, and we have to be nice to him. Um, we'll see how that one pans out. No, but it was a great illustration. It was on border, and it just oh, it, it really described a different They're way in. of using those those light walls to create multiple angles and lines of sight, and we see them. All already being deployed always it is though that manages to pick up the opening oh, to there we go. that's going to be the twitch down Great but play. astro he manages to find dan and that is a big big one for team secret four versus four this is the kind of stuff we were commending team secret for yesterday there was the team play that was coming out playing into these situations where they had the numbers advantage beautiful bit of team play enough pressure to force him to drop the hatch to someone on the upside down repelling printer watching the watching the angle and getting him as he drops through real good easy kill onto again the top man for Virtus pro and arguably one of the best players that we have in the EU League so far, given how Paul has played this stage. Well, ZN's just going to be trying to work from the rooftop now after that early sort of explosion of action directly into sight. Uh, the foot has come off the gas pedal a little bit and it's just a little bit more of a backseat. Just see exactly what's going on here from Secret. They know they've got time Does on the clock. Head? They can use it. No. Uh, just gets no. away with that. Slevin misses his man. Shepard wriggling through. That's such a kicker as well because it would have been a freebie because he's been sat in this spot waiting for a freebie to come up. And when one presents himself, both players just pass each other like ships in the night a matter of inches between them but neither spotting the other savage down this longer angle going to start putting some pressure off towards quad wall where shepherd is waiting on about 30 hp they have tickled down a few of these members on virtus pro side three of them away from 100 hp so far so good start from secret but now you're looking for the execute coming into this last 40 seconds absolutely just showing the limitations of that book skeleton key at distance there as well unable to breach through that soft wall um, and just leaves a little bit of safety but that safety was transient des and it's been destroyed now by oh, those Selma charges. That miss. is detonating Shepard here. He just seems to get away with everything, but not that one. A Savage manages to find the man from the window. They have to go for the hatch drop. 20 seconds left to go, and Joystick picks up the first. The cap can trap <laughs> on the second. Secret, you can't be giving away lives like that. 2v1 now as Astro finds a double. That is a big, big moment from him at the end of the round. Pasha manages to find Savage. It's all up to Astro. He's got three kills in the round. Can he make it four? It's a ring oh! around the roses on Pasha. He's going to find his man pops up from behind the desk and sends him out of the round. And that's going to be Virtus Pro levelling things up 1-1.
A real good tug of war there between the two teams, I thought, Tim. Just that back and forth trading, the easy kills coming in for VP, secret capitalizing a little bit and getting one or two back themselves. But Pasha holds firm in the one versus two. They weren't quite aware of where he was. So the first kill was a freebie. And the second one, they had an idea as to where he was, but not an exact idea. And he capitalizes on that incredibly well. One apiece so far. I love how close this feels already. We've got a game, haven't we? That's the top and bottom of it. Yeah. Someone always said, I think it was a tweet I saw once, someone said, you know, casters, they've always got something on their hands, and then there was a picture of casters, like, holding game, the word game on their hands. <laughs> and I was just like, that is very true. We do say that all the time. Oh, it. But it is turning, into, true. A, it's it's turning it's, into a really good game. We've basically it. seen, and this is what I love, especially for a best of three, we've seen both teams come out and have a good round. Yes. Shepard... I'm, I'm going to have to say it, Shepard, you, you played your luck there. Uh, <laughs> you really milked it for all it was worth. He was lucky to keep himself as live as long as he did. Um, but other than that, yeah, I thought Virtus Pro were pretty solid. Um, comes down to a 1v1, but then again, saying that the fact that it was, you know, down to a 2v1 was Astro coming in and just getting a couple of kills. Um, you know, it wasn't necessarily um, from, from anything Virtus Pro did wrong. So, yeah, good round from both teams. Love what I'm seeing so far. Uh, we're going to go to our third site of the day so far. Not going head back down to basement even though it is open we're going to head up to the um, recently lesser popular top floor CEO site Yes, and I think largely would say is still a difficult site to attack into but again with double architects coming out in the castle and the Azami I think it makes a lot of sense. You can reduce the potency of some of those weaker spots. You know, the fallen barricade, for example, or the, sorry, fallen shells inside of CEO itself. You can use to lessen the impact of the windows. You can hold around Banana a lot easier. Let's not forget as well that Castle last year did get the change where he now has four armor panels rather than three. With these two operators together, I think you do get a hell of a lot of strength. Even with the mirror available, though, you don't want to go too hard on the site architect in Tim. Astro is just going to be working the drones for the time being, looking to make sure it's uh, safe before he sends it. think someone's there? Yeah, I think he does think that. It's interesting. They've got the Keeper Barricade, which would suggest, obviously, the position's being held, and they know that they're going to be holding on to at least Stock Corridor. Um, but as you say, the drone really should have been able to provide that information to, to tell them, unless there was a, maybe a sound call or something um, from the man out in the corridor itself. But no, uh, they're not going to get any joy there. Instead, using that to clear out utility, um, and Shepard instead will be holding from the meeting in table and angle out towards stock. A couple of devices hacked out by Groovy in the round. In case you're wondering what that two means underneath the Brava drones counts. You see it now with Mozzie as well. You can see how many is captured for a while. It was it was bugged. It said 99 sometimes. It was wrong. Now it's more correct. And you're seeing the same here with the Brava. Savage to start things out. Again, Dan going down in the early round. We've seen that now two rounds in a row. Again, I've commended the player and said the best we've got in EU right now by the stats. I think he's king across four different categories that we've got. But... Here, at least, he is struggling to have much of an impact in the game. Savage's Selma charges have all been used now, and the reason I pick up on that is particularly important. He tried to put one on the long angle from the window to janitor wall uh, to make it difficult for the player, uh, Pasha in this case, to stay inside of here and play exactly this angle. Oh. Natural, bad throw. Um, but the Selma charge was taken off, I think, by Shepard on the castle. Um, and so not having any left is going to create a lot of security for Virtus Pro in and around janitor. Pasha it is himself managing to get those couple of kills. Joystick finds one onto Savage as well. Well, um, and they might well just rue not being able to clear that area of the map. Again, they're really kind of trying to poke the bear here as well as they're stepping on fours. There's just crossfires coming in everywhere against the members of Secret. Groovy's the last one left standing. No drones left, no information. We know how this round ends in the last 20 seconds or so, Tim, which means 2-1 to VP inside the first three. Not all that bad. Yep, Joystick uh, taking that final kill. As I say, the, I like the setup there that the facilitated operators to be able to keep Janitor safe and Pasha was then able to play in that position and cause an awful lot of damage. So, well played from VP. Fresh, I believe you are with us, my friend. Where oh, are you? Speak hello to beyond the grave, my friend. Can you hear me? So, yes. We were talking about Virtus Pro's great defense, and they've been great inside of their defense in terms of EU League. But actually, when you look a little bit more historically for Virtus Pro slash outsiders on bank over the last six or so months, their defense has actually been at a 23% defensive win rate. They've not been able to defend this map, particularly executes. I think back to a game that they had last stage, granted slightly different roster, um, against Wolves, where Wolves was just basically able to use the Doka B, take map control very quickly, and then execute. Secret are playing 100% Dokubi so far. They've played it three and three rounds. However, they've been unsuccessful. Virtus Pro have clearly gone back. 
shored up their defences, worked on what happens when they're being executed into, especially alongside the Dokubi, and played a little bit more compact, a little bit more crossfires. And Secret thus far, apart from the basement, which is the strongest site on the map, have been unable to answer that on open area and CEO. Do you think maybe part of the decay you pick though is against the Maestro? Probably. Knowing that VP love running it this If much. you looked yesterday, especially that cafe round that BDS lost when they did a full clear, a Dokubi there would have completely, you know, muted both the Maestro and the Echo that was on site. And VP have been playing a lot of it, granted none on this particular site. Thank it's you very a, much. A very interesting point about the mm. Dokubi for any, um, you know, anybody who's maybe watching a little bit newer, maybe wondering, you know, how and why that interaction's important. Um, we had a, a recent change to Dokubi where yeah. the, the universal phone call that she makes that impacts on everybody's devices actually prevents you from viewing the cameras at that time as well for a period of time. So as, the, as dead players. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, um, you know, as you're coming into a push, for example, you hit that Dokubi call. It's not about just preventing some players from, you know, maybe actively being able to engage you because they're trying to end that call it's also the fact that they lose all visual for that period of time until they've ended that call um, so if it's timed well like you say yeah it can absolutely neutralise something like a match. I think it is very very oppressive because obviously as a dead player you also can't disable it so you're having to endure the full there, duration yeah. yeah, and do nothing so I, honestly it's going to get nerfed don't know in what capacity we'll find out I imagine in the next patch for now though here we go on the start on through and this is what I touched on back in round one Tim get the switch thrown in early get rid of as many any of those Vulcan canisters as you can. And I think they've just cleared away two of them so far inside of the site. So a good starting point for Secret here. And we've got the Monty trying to work his way up and through. But Groovy finds his man on that little pixel angle underneath the Azami Cuba barrier. Dan gets slammed there. Um, just trying to hold on to servers. And again, a rough start for him in another round. Sleber manages to find Pasha. And it doesn't look like the basement is going to be a particularly good location for Virtus Pro at this point. Shepard's going to look to make a challenge here. Knows he's being pushed in garage, but no, he's says enough of that I'm not in for that he's going to dip himself away um, joystick on the mid floor could still be in an important position if he's got the hatches available to him he could potentially prevent a plant going down but behind the Monte he might not be able to find that angle we've got the Osser as well who's going to work and continue to make a nuisance in garage and right now things are not looking good for Virtus Pro Part of the battle they've got is with no hard breach. They've got hard breach gadgets, but no dedicated hard breach. So they can't get open the wall. They really need for the Monty to go in with the shield up. They need to get really the second hard breach gadget down, which at this point just feels like an absolutely huge risk to try and make the play come about. So sure, crouching through the hole, you're probably safe, but it's that moment of exposure you've got to be so careful of. Here we go then with Savage stepping up and finding one more. Secret in firm control. Smokes come out, but it seems to be a bait as no one has yet gone in for a plant on the side of Secret. Shepard's moving, movement leaving him um, in a different position again we saw him get away with it a couple of times in round two but this time Savage was well in place to punish him and oh he's gosh, able to find HP. a lot of damage onto Joystick they have to stop exposing themselves to this hatch Des, because it's going to be the end of the round for them if it continues four versus two a minute left to go this is a round that Secret should be winning I'm not sure Joystick where you're pushing there there's a man on main stairs Savage slab and finish off the round Ooh, after a good round defending in round three, it was a rough one in four for Virtus Pro. I don't blame Joystick there as well. I think he's made the right call. You know you've been watching from above, you've been shot down to almost nothing. You know you're in a two versus four, and you know at this point the execute is coming in on the other side that you safely can't get across to because that hatch is being watched. So he makes that call to go up main stairs to try and get some kind of flank off to clear the hatch player that's been challenging him. He doesn't know that he's going to have two players sat there staring at him because he assumes, quite fairly, I think, that there'll be three players supporting the Monty on that push coming in on the security side. So he's had a good go. He's been punished for it. I don't blame him. I think with all the information they had, that was the right call. Interestingly, Slevin still had a call available for the DKB as well. So even if it's all went pear-shaped and they couldn't really pull off the execute and get a kill onto joystick like that, hit the calls, suddenly those three players that are dead on VP side have zero information. You're absolutely laughing. Now we go back down to the basement again, and this time... We've got that Maestro back on size. It's an interesting site choice, um, I'm going to say, from Virtus Pro, uh, because they are in a situation where they've got open area available to them and they won that back in round two. Um, you know, as, as Fresh said, coming into this game, Team Secret, if they get three rounds on the on the attack, you start looking at that and thinking, Virtus Pro have struggled on the attack, they can starve them of time. You know, it may well be doable for them to go on and win this first map. So mm. Virtus Pro really need to be winning four defences here, realistically. That is where their real strength is. Um, 
Um, so going to be a little bit of a problem for them, potentially, especially if they lose this round. So I'd have maybe liked to see them go back up to open area. But they've obviously got some confidence that they can get the job done down here. And um, we'll see we go how again. that transpires. I really thought for a second that shot drone was going straight in to get rid of some of those Vulcan canisters. Look at this. Ignore that guy. You can go for the laser gate, of course, to try and get rid of that. But no, they want this inside of sight and they've got it as well. So unfortunate. I thought for a second the Maestro might be able to find it. But what have they got now? All the options they need in the world to see what's going on inside of sight. It has been broken off, which means I'll have to open it to see what's happening. But that is such a valuable piece of utility to have inside of sight. Exactly that. Uh, big start from Team Secret there. Um, just using the clutch drawn to fantastic effect um, to help them push forward. They need to start taking some ground now, get themselves in. Uh, maybe they got into server very quickly last time. Dan is still pretty active around there, up the blue stairs um, and down into server as well. It may be that Secret choose to open the hatch here just to remove a little bit of that safety from him. So he may feel um, pushed back to site at that point. But uh, Secret, not in any, not in any major mm. rush at the minute. The drones are still coming out and they're still uh, opening those other hatches. What I will give to Virtus Pro, it's, it's less happening this round, so it's not really the best round to talk about it, but I'm going to do it anyway, because screw you guys. What keeps on happening is they're using laser gates plus the barricades they keep deploying everywhere to indicate where the push is coming from. You saw last round, for example, we had a run down into basement. We had both of the uh, ones at the bottom of marble were barricaded off. We had castle barricades out towards loan office, for example, all just for the sake of feeding information over to the defenders on where the push is coming from. They don't want to get stabbed in the back. They don't want to get upset by a player that's been lurking off somewhere else in the round and then makes an appearance through a really odd angle later into it. They are really making use of the map as best they can to give them information. In this round, this isn't really a thing. It's a much more dug-in comp they've gone for. Time is ticking though. 55 seconds left to go. We've got a Goyo canister that has been popped there. YZN continues the work, just going to open a very minimal hole in that other wall to allow the line of sight through um, towards what would normally be the mm. uh, the mirror position inside there, not being played this time. Oh, yeah. But you know what I mean. Savage is going to find himself down, but not out in garage. And it looks like Virtus Pro might have the start of a, a successful defence here, Des. She does for a second, yeah. I mean, with Savage being down, he's that backstab player that I was talking about. Now Groovy's the next one making this kind of play but the laser gate is going to impede him. Two kills coming out for VP. It's basically a 2v5 at this point, Tim, and it feels like Virtus Pro finally figured out this hole to make it work for them. Groovy steps in and finds one for himself. Another one goes down. I was going to say there's only one left standing, but before I can finish that sentence, VP have finished him off. Up to three and two, they go on the defensive side, Tim. The battle now being, they've got to change side. Now they've finally cracked that after three swings of the bat. Well, you know, I, I did raise a little bit of caution about the side choice there. I would say coming away from it with hindsight, they win in that site okay um, you know they now have other sites that they have won previously they can take their choice of top floor or open they've won both of them it's it was a gamble in round five I think but it's paid off for them um, you know they've got that confidence now they think they can probably lock out a 4-2 here so Virtus Pro going from 2-2 two -two for me looking a little bit like oh, I'm not too sure about this this could be a bad half for them now I feel like they're in the driving seat a little bit and can possibly get this job done it was a top floor site that they uh, uh, Team Secret struggled to attack last time around. As I said, they didn't get the janitor wall open. Pasha stayed in there, pivoted, found kills, and was a nuisance for them. So mm. that's an area to focus on. You know, for you sat at home, you know, what's going to happen in this round? What's going to be important? Focus on that janitor area. Do they manage to get a breach on that wall? Is it held by a shepherd playing behind the castles again? Um, you know, what happens in that area and how effective is it for VP? Absolutely. Again, it's this double architect setup, right? They've, they've played behind us an awful lot most of the game, and I think it has been you know largely successful i've enjoyed seeing the challenges it's put before team secret and you know has got them up to a point where they're three two in the lead last time around on this site my only concern really here being that we're now replaying site secret as seen once there's not too many surprises you can throw at them they used to see in the castle and the army coming in alongside each other they used to the shield coming out of dan i do like the patches on the mute here as well because you're dealing with things like the kb it's not there this time they've gone for a line instead probably as part acknowledgement towards that change that's coming in from the side of virtus pro so it's more micro movements rather than having to figure out what a team is trying to do the very first time you see them playing on that that site. 
Right, Grube straight up onto the window rappel. Not something that they had too much success with last time, um, but Astro is going to pick up a big double. What a start for Team Secret. Joystick can always both oh, go down. Me. Make it a three. He's taking stock at this point. Absolutely slams Virtus Pro in the beginning of the round, and that is Team Secret best foot forward. Just absolutely blitz them there. I mean, the K1's coming back. Astro does get taken down. Turns out gods can bleed as well. But a four versus two with all this utility still in the back pockets for Secret. It's hard to see how Virtus Pro hold on, assuming, of course, Team Secret play this properly. Seven drones available. Utility, players alive. They've got Ossers to play behind the impacts, for example. There is still so much to work with. They've just got to not throw it, which is far easier to do than maybe it sounds. It certainly is. You've got Shepard and Pasha, two of the most experienced players that you're going to come up against. Uh, you know, still alive. They're not going to overpeak. They're not going to overengage. Uh, they're going to wait for their opportunities. Now then, that's good um, from Team Secret. They managed to get nice. Shepard movement moving. Sleban's there to take him down, and then in comes a final kill. And Team Secret level out the half, three-three, leaving big questions going into the second half. Absolutely. I think it's time for our professor to jump back in once more. Team Secret, after their time out there in at least two of those three rounds in the second quarter, went a little bit more direct. We saw the Monty play, the straight into server on the basement that they won, and then we saw Astro with a, a nice little play to get into stock and use the sound timing of the ace throw and everything else going off to get in and find the entry there. That's won them a couple of rounds. They've got that free free split, and I would say that's quite successful. However, I'm very surprised by them going down to the basement as their first site choice. The reason I'm so surprised is over the last six months, Secret best defensive site is actually open area and Vertus Pro's worst attacking site is open area. Conversely, Vertus Pro's best attacking site is the basement. We know that they like to full clear and they're always going to start top down, work their way through the map. So for Secret, it would be about a lot of their defensive operators to force the time. <laughs> I heard him get kicked out there for a second. Mm. You know what that is? That's a template of like, okay, these things are going to be at this volume and that's going to happen like this. And they press the button and it's like, yeah, screw you, Fresh. Thank you very much, Fresh. Haha, <laughs> you can't talk anymore. <laughs> we have a quick rehost coming in, as we you do. guys may have seen. So don't worry, you haven't missed anything. We will be back in a short amount of time. A short amount of time. Do you know where Pasha's run away to? I think, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what Team Secret do in this first defence. As, as Fresh said there, Virtus Pro, they're going to want to go for a full clear. Um, it's a map like Bank, it's a big map. They're going to start at the top, they're going to work their way down, they're going to want to be confident that they don't have anything lurking above them. Um, Team Secret have got two options. They can lean into that or they can just turtle up down inside a side. I think, you know, given what we were shown by G2, um, you know, pre previously and, um, you know, other teams yesterday specifically, Frustrate Virtus Pro on time. Make it difficult for them to, to function at the end of the round. Get them down to that last 15, 20 seconds. Um, and if Secret can do that, and I think the answer to how they do that is to get out into the map, is to avoid the gunfights on the top of mid floors for as long as possible. Don't, you know, go in and give your lives away. But I would like to see maybe mute jammers up there. I'd like to see, you know, maybe a mozzie brought along. All those classic operators that are going to slow things down, um, that are going to make it difficult for them to be confident in that clearing. Let's see a Solis. Let's see a Solis brought along and take out as many drones as you can. Make them come in and face check everything. Um, you know, and make them burn as much of that clock as you can do. I touched on this in the pregame, right, before we even got into this map, was Solus, again, Secret seem to be the team that are always the ones being punished most and making that operator look truly overpowered. She's incredibly strong, let's not forget, but they really do a great job of making her look the strongest operator in the game. Because... Again, Dark Zero completely bullied Secret at SI. Got bullied by it a little bit yesterday. I'd be surprised if Virtus Pro don't look at that and go, OK, clearly these guys have an issue dealing with Solus. Let's bring it along and try and play around it. But obviously, we didn't see that earlier on. Hopefully, here in the second half, Secret can put on a bit of a show on the defensive side themselves. And who knows? Maybe we even see them start playing around it. Very possibly. I think uh, the noise is in my ears. Don't tell me that the game is ready, but it does tell me that we're getting a few players. Got medics back. flicking around the menus. Yeah, I can hear. I tell you what, I bet you could do that blindfolded hear, uh, these days. A few players uh, joining back into the lobby as well, so I think we'll be uh, we'll be underway fairly. Do you soon. reckon medics could configure a whole lobby blindfolded? Hundred percent. 
I mean, I've, he's I've, done it so many times. Over I the believe years. he could. I, I believe he. It's like playing. Like, believe he could observe a game like that. At this it's point. like it's probably yeah. It's like playing GTA back in the day, like cheat code, just like blah, 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 real fast, and you're like done. That's medics going through these menus. Hundred percent. Straight through. Meow. Fast medics. Meow. Fast medics. <laughs> As opposed to slow medics. Zoomy medics. Zoomy medics. He's not, he's not that young, is he? Uh, no, I don't think he is. He's not, a, he's not, he's not a I zoomer. I don't think he's quite a zoomer. Medics, a how old are you? You're a boomer medics? Yeah, tell us if you're a... He's, no, you're the boomer. Oh, <laughs> oh it's... <laughs> <laughs> I thought medics I thought doing we... the, the thing is we're now <laughs> just having a conversation and laughing with somebody that the stream can't even hear <laughs> and medics has just literally walked into the studio and gone what the hell guys <laughs> I really thought it was medics. I also believe that red like you know could yeah, put that he menu probably also could. Blindfold. No, you know what was really funny in that first half, actually? I didn't I didn't go as far as doing it, but I was watching one of the rounds and we had so much overhead, and I was going to be like, Medics, this is really good overhead. Like, thank you. I honestly thought it was Medics doing our first map. And I was like, that's really good overhead. Well done. And it turns out it's Red Like. So, well done, Red Like. As I've said previously, the fact that we get confused sometimes just because. I like sure, Red. Just goes to red like the quality red. across all of our observers. They are all very good. They, they certainly are. It's almost a bit different without the dour attitude of Easy in the studio, isn't it? I do miss him. He's off doing an A now. Yeah, he is. I do miss Easy. We'll see him again soon, I'm sure. Full gen. He is. Let's get back into game, Des. Let's. It's going to be round seven. We've got Team Secret versus Pro. They are level at the half. It is three, three, and nothing to separate the two of them. Um, the, we would argue, though, that Team Secret on the defence have a little bit of an advantage because we know that Virtus Pro have struggled with the attack, particularly time. So something for you to focus on at home. We keep banging on about it because it is likely to be an important point one way or another. Um, what you want to be watching out for is Virtus Pro. Where are they up to? At what point? in the round check on that clock at about the two minute mark the one minute mark you know where are they how much have they got left to do um, and that's going to be a big focus can they move quickly can they get entries and can they get into that ex execution position soon enough mm. well once again we have the azami on side he's seen it all of that first half and i guarantee you're going to carry on seeing it throughout much of the second as well just super valuable. The interesting one that you saw there being used a moment ago was onto that single wall leading out towards Electric. Just because of the angle that you get there, players like to kind of run on through and just smash their way through, a little bit of a spray in towards open area without really exposing yourself. Whereas now it's a little bit more bother than just that. Here comes the Sledge, Joystick, charging his way on towards these windows, looking to put some early pressure in on the top floor. No one appears to be found just yet, though. I say no one's up there. Slebin is dug inside a janitor, but no one playing quite openly out towards Long Desk. And if there is too much pressure, he has a hatch to drop back through. Just going to be getting the drones in. Here comes the top floor clearance that we expected. Uh, Slebin is back down in open area. Is he going to drop all the way down? I wouldn't like to see that yet from Secret. It's a little bit of a quick um, a quick retreat to site, if that's the case. Savage is going to keep himself on blue stairs. I'd actually like to see Savage play his life on blue stairs in this first round, maybe. Um, you know, just don't don't yield that space. Don't give it up. Um, really force Virtus Pro. Uh, you know, that's the key there. If they start applying pressure and you drop back, that's going to give them that time back that they need. Savage does take a lot of damage there and looks like he's going to be forced away and this is actually pretty good from Virtus Pro so far Des they're not even halfway through the round two players have been forced back to site there's a third on his way as well and um, you know they're looking pretty good on the clock so far I kind of want to give it to Secret as well though right yeah 90 seconds in and they're dropping away compared to Virtus Pro who were all back on site with 60 seconds left on the clock so for Secret they've stayed out longer they've forced a little bit more out of the other side but we'll give it to Virtus Pro that they've kept you know six drones up they've got all their utility in back pocket bar one frag grenade it has been a good clear Dong. let's see what Virtus Pro can do with the that time. hammer when you miss sometimes makes the most satisfying sound effects I have a habit of missing hatches because um, I try to obviously break them on my way up to oh. them and I do have a habit of swinging and smacking the floor. Um, YZN is going to find Joystick with a Nitro and that's a big opener for Team Secret. This is where the problems have come in for Virtus Pro like and it. I mentioned entry before this round for that reason. When they get to this point and they lose the entry, that's when they sometimes start stalling out. The question now is, will that be the case? I love. Oh, I was going to say I really love this for a second because they were wasting time by having multiple hurdles for Virtus Pro to step through the exact same tactic that BDS employed yesterday. 
They have kind of cleared over one a little bit quicker here on that step forward. Here comes the Exothermic as well onto the single wall, which I don't think will get cleared off here by an impact or anything of the sorts. But with these walls being soft, it does make it a little bit difficult to do much about. C4 in hand, Step is going to step himself forwards here. Got to watch out for the hatch. C4 over the top. Shepard is going to go down to the C4. They've got the one at the longer angle, but now there's no cover for the plant when this comes through. It's all going to come down to the hatch, but the drop comes through. It's a two versus two. One's going in for the plant. It's a one versus two. Technically a 1v1. And Basha wins it out for his teammate as he's getting the diffuser down. We just got another look at it there. What a pre-fire from Pasha coming around that corner. Knew the army was bottom ramp and absolutely destroyed them before they could even react. Beautiful backstab coming in from Pasha just to close out the round there. And that was a better first attack from Virtus Prodes. A little bit better on time. They were at about the minute mark when they were thinking about putting that diffuser down. And this is, it's actually a really important example of that because you've got a situation where the diffuser's going down, you lose it, you drop it, you get killed. Virtus Pro normally often wouldn't have an opportunity for a second chance there because the time is ticking down so they just have to run in and do things quickly and just try and make anything work whereas they just had a little bit more breathing space there um, and it was better from them a good attack so we're sorry coming out of Slebin here as you may see him moving around barricading things up as he goes again the information being fed from the noise from that over to the defenders helpful in understanding where Virtus Pro are coming from now Tim we've spoken about this Solus an awful lot in this game Again, barricading up more doorways as he goes along, but it's a similar story, more out of Sleben. Solis on the under the pick we've spoken about all game long. It's good to see it finally come into the board. If you're on the assumption here that Virtus Pro quite fairly are going to get drones in and look to guide in a couple of their entry players, looking in towards like Dan, Pasha, for example, this can be a really good way to slow down what's already quite a slow team. Absolutely, take away the utility. Keep an eye on the top left of your screen. You've got the drone counter up there for Virtus Pro. Currently, they've lost one. They've got nine left available to them. Um, the three with dots in the middle shows that there's three actively being used out in the field at the minute. The rest are in pocket. Um, a fourth one's going to be thrown out, but that's interesting because it's Virtus Pro maybe recognising there's a Solis on the field here, so we don't want to commit too many drones. We want to keep them in our pockets where we can to try and keep them safe. Um, um, but that information battle is going to be key in oh this round. Groovy somehow gets away with it. And they've got a dock. They've got a dock. They can get him back up to full HP. That's why the shotgun's coming out. He's being pressured in. And there we go. Straight back to full HP. You love to see it. What a that play. is so jammy. He'd be dead He'd by be dead. now. That's as, that's as simple <laughs> as it is. He would have lost his life there. The drone comes in. He's able to take it out. But Groovy still Another keeping one. hold of his key position. There Second we go. Nade does the job. Groovy going to be taken out by Pasha. I just love that back and forth dance that we've just seen between the two teams there as well. Again, the dot with the full stim. 200 HP. Really kind of comes into its own, but cannot survive the second nade. I think one also came in from Joystick, by the way, when he was playing off towards Windows. So I thought for a second the kill might come in from there, but nope. I believe it was Pasha. Joystick's going to rappel on in, going to be able to start opening up those verticals. The proximity alarm not really going to do much. He's conscious of the potential push coming from Janitor, but the player was actually further back in stock, and Savage is going to take the opportunity to get himself back down marble stairs. He's maybe actually going to think about all the way down to the basement. It's always an interesting mm. little lurk position because you can get yourself back up blue stairs and really do some damage in and around lower square skylight as the round progresses. Well, I've already had Sleben sat in this spot before on the main stairs as well, right? Narrowly missed the player that came charging up the top. Does Dan know? I was about to say, is he aware of what's going on towards the right? I mean, it is fully reinforced off, so I'm not 100% sure what it was that the Iz army was looking for there. But Dan's working his way down through square, marching on his way forward. In fact, I think what he, he hasn't got the weird little jammy angle, has he? Surely not. Nah, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I think maybe because the reinforcements have been done different ways, I don't know if Dan was just a little bit like, hmm, is, is something open there? Well, I know he's reinforced it, but I know... I'm not going to talk to Fresh. It sounds weird if I do it on broadcast. But I know I can't forget where it was, but on one of the maps before, there was like a real small angle that you got between two reinforcements on different sides. Not here it's going to happen, though. They're on the march forward. Quad Ball, he knows that he's on the ground like a snake. But Pasha strikes, sinks in his fangs. A 3k in the round for him. Looking onwards towards an ace before Joystick denies it away. But one thing's for sure, Tim. This round is going the way of Virtus Pro, and they'll go up to 5-3. and three. Almost certainly. Savage tries to um, get the vertical angle. He can get one. himself one kill, but that's going to be not. the limit. Sure. 
not. As you see, no. Virtus Pro scattering, but they're Where's unable to get out of the line of fire. They're going to be looking no to way. get that diffuser down. No way. Somehow, in comes a third. He's going to have to drop the hatch. It's being it. watched. There goes no. the plan. Joystick with the final kill, but that was far closer than it ever should have been for Virtus Pro. But 5-3, two successful attacks. Virtus Pro are looking much sharper here on the attack than they did yesterday against BDS. <sighs> I would have been so nervous I'd spoken that into existence then. The fact that he got a 3k is pretty ludicrous. The the double fact that he almost won the round by getting the down, if he'd found always potentially on the down, that would have been round over and done, but he finds a different player, not quite the one you were looking for. Still almost pulls it off, so fair credit for execution there. Just not quite the exact close that we were looking for, Savage. However, as said, for Virtus Pro, it's five and three. They are the ones very quickly pulling into the lead. One more round and they are at match point. It's going to be a real big uphill struggle for Secret, who have not yet managed to make it work on the defensive side. It is, um, it is going to be a, an uphill struggle, that much is for sure, Secret, just unable to um, really sort of create any gaps. You know, we've spoken about this with Solis before, you use the Solis to take out the drones, it creates little gaps, you can hide yourself away, um, you know, those little rat plays, um, but Secret just really not able to, to try anything. Virtus Pro were, were well on top of them throughout that round, um, and it was, it was very well played by them, very impressive on the whole. And the thing, the problem that they've got now as well, since the rehorse Pasha is five and one, and we spoke about gun skill coming in here. There's Pasha is hitting shot after shot at the yep. minute, um, and that is a danger that they need to curtail quickly. To curtail quickly. Mm. There you go. Indeed. He says, biting into a crumpet and sipping at his tea. That's after you've mocked my my accent twice. Or well, I can mock that accent because you've gone too far the other way now. You swung the needle off towards Posh. Just can't win. No. If you sound like a Brummy, it'd be, well, no, you wouldn't actually, because the Brum accent sounds horrible. We've done that before. <laughs> you could I was my Brummy was too powerful for you. you In my defence, I handle was it. pissing myself laughing. You That's why I couldn't it, do the Mancunian accent. You couldn't handle it. Would you describe your accent as Mancunian? No. What would you describe it as? Burnley. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> what would you call your accent? Um, I don't know. It's a difficult one. It's definitely not Mancunian because they've got like specific words that they say. Um, Manchester. Uh, and yeah, the the yeah they sort of enunciate certain parts of words like that. You that mean I, like you do? I just don't. Eh. In not the same. Ones. Ooh, eh. um, opening kill. It's gonna come in. Savage onto oh, Dan. Dear. Straight out of the window, but he's not gonna get any joy. Oh. He's using his Oryx dash to try and get no. himself into the two as he makes it. He makes it, guys. He just thought he'd add a little bit of challenge to this game. Not that it wasn't already hard enough for Secret, given they're down five and three, but he stays alive. No dot pairing alongside the Oryx this time. Oh, just thinking about Oryx. I wonder if we'll still see him after the next patch, because he's losing his 1.5, Tim. He is losing his 1.5. The patch notes have come out. Uh, Fresh, Fresh is in shambles. Fresh is in shambles. He was devastated. Um, he's been a, a bit of an Oryx lesion man. He has recently sort of converted to IQ as well. So, oh, really? You know, he might be uh, he might be okay. Um, but uh, yeah, he's uh, he's going to be losing his Oryx playtime. <laughs> Probably a good thing. However, Secret are decimating Virtus Pro this round. That's what you want to see. A bit of a battle in. Why are we doing this again? <laughs> Playing exactly the same game. They're thinking, you can do it, I can do it even better. going to get caught out this time. <laughs> Always is sat watching. He knows exactly when the man is coming. It's as easy as that. But it's, oh, I was going to say likely uh, to not be too impactful, but two kills come back and all of a sudden we're in a 2v3. Des. This 2v5 looks a lot more possible right now, but the pulse could be a big problem in beautiful. that scenario. I'm and that is exactly why. Pretty sure that was pre-placed on the hatch as well. It's the second time they got away with this this half as well. It's really good stuff. Coming out of secret, Groovy's there. Finals out for the close and joystick goes down 5-4 to Virtus Pro after a little bit of a wobble then um, Secret managed to get themselves around back after Virtus Pro take back to back attacks um, you know is that going to be the start of the ball rolling fresh I think there's a couple of surprises for me in those first three rounds of the second half the first surprise realistically is that Secret are carrying on trying to play a little bit of split defence where there's only like two or three roamers split honestly yeah but there's and there's, me and bloody split to be fair that's true there's two or three up on the top floor for example when they're roaming on open area or whatever against first pro you need to do everything as five people Otherwise, it doesn't work because if you let them set up, they will slice and dice their way through two or three people roaming. It's a very different attack to what you would normally see. The second thing that impressed me actually from Virtus Pro was the fact that Pasha is finding these gaps and opportunities and he's taking a little bit of initiative away from the plan. We've seen him basically win the rounds because he's making those plays and that's something that we've been calling for from Virtus Pro's attacks. So that was great to see from his part.
Thanks, Freshie. Here we go, Tim. Round 10. Round 10. Let's go. It is Round currently... 10 or round number 10? Round number 10. Let's go. It's currently 5-4. Virtus Pro after getting a couple of good attacks, but our secret going to be able to slam the brakes on this train and prevent Virtus Pro from being able to get any more. This is an important round for Team Secret. They obviously don't want to be in a position of facing map points, so they're going to try to get this locked down. It's open area. Uh, we saw this from them back in round eight. It was one that they just oh, now they know the jump pass going to work. Um, this is it. They're using the uh, the DPEC method, as we will call it, just dancing the uh, the. He has drum. revolutionised this operation. He really has, you know, the Oka drone goes out of the drone hole, um, just feeds information, <laughs> but you don't oh, get away got it. with that. I don't know why, the, it, you know, the same rule applies to Yokai drones that applies to operators. Don't repeat the angle that you've just peaked and someone's seen you on. They get the drone for free. You know, I don't think we'll see a jump out, but maybe Virtus Pro just stay slightly aware of the potential of a jump out from Team Secret, given we had two out of these windows in the last round alone. That's it, it kind of makes it difficult for you to focus. Pasha, as I said, going well. Um, um, on the attack, gonna take down Slebin with a headshot. Oh, what a beauty! Coming in, gonna take down Savage with a headshot as well. And Pasha oh really my, starting why? to find his feet. I mean, we're peeking into everything. And Virtus Pro, just like, thank you very much for the freebies. 5v2, 5v1. They are destroying Secret as they're scurrying around the map and just sat there realistically holding angles and waiting. You know, Pasha was largely minding his own business inside a lobby, looking to cash a check and instead finds himself a couple of kills on players that got a little bit too leery. And the thing is, they don't blame Secret. We know they're great gunners. They want to go for these gunfights, but Pasha especially is just activated today. For Virtus Pro, it's a flawless round. Six and four and match points. I don't know what Virtus Pro have done between yesterday and today, uh, but they are looking much better on the attack. They are going in there. They not. It's not just about winning the gunfights. It's about they, they're forcing the gunfights early. They're getting themselves into positions early to be able to win those gunfights without burning all of the clock in order to do so. Um, and then, yeah, when the opportunities are being presented to them, we've just seen it there. Pasha, he collects one, he collects two. Nice and easy. Um, and Virtus Pro are, are looking sharp here. They're looking much better than they did yesterday. Completely agree. And it, it's good to see. I think Secret are a team that are... I don't want to put it all on Secret because it takes away from VP. But Secret are playing into Virtus Pro very aggressively. You know, Fresh kind of touched on it. You've got a, a few players looking to be aggressive, get up in their face there, sending one player to go for a gunfight, a second to go for a gunfight. And again, a comment I made at the start of this map was they are a slow-moving juggernaut. A juggernaut doesn't just mean they're, you know, they're slow. It also means they're pretty damn deadly. If you get too Powerful. close, they will put you in the dirt. And it has happened time and time again. When Virtus Pro have got nice and close and in range of a member of Secret who's being a little bit aggressive, they are winning gunfights the vast majority of the time. So really here, this is where I want to see Secret doing what Fresh touched on. You know, play together as a team. Look for those 2v1s, the 3v1s. Pasha was relatively split there inside the lobby. Sure, he had some assistance on the window repel, but that was about it. It was still a fair 1v1 between archives, or sorry, between tellers and between front lobby, but Virtus Pro are going to win that in probably 70% of, um, of occurrences, really, in this game between the two teams. Dan's already inside of server here. It is a top floor site. Don't get yourself over excited, um, but he's basically doing the reverse of what Virtus Pro usually do. It's going to be a bottom-up clearance from Dan. He's got himself in there. He's going to move himself up to Square Skylight um, and just try to ensure that they're not going to have anybody coming down from uh, below. Astro is playing in side of open at the minute so needs to be aware of the potential push coming from that direction but it looks like Dan's actually dipping out of that one back down that dirt tunnel he is indeed he's going to be heading back up to the outside mm. just wanting to make sure I think he's probably I don't know if he's got something in place there whether he's just dumped a drone on blue stairs or what it might be um, but obviously they're concerned about the potential well, for that work he was being droned in by always and always had a drone ahead of him realistically I don't know if that was more of a preparation for later in the round so blue is an option for them but it feels largely like that was a you know for the most part a wasted oh. Very nice. Oh, beautiful from Just Kruber. sprays onto it and always moves straight into the angle as well. Poor always. That's the first thing he's done after coming off drone and found himself completely shut out of the round. The beauty being the concussions and the impacts are also offline. Yeah, great opening kill for Team Secret. They need two rounds now without a mistake, and that's just to take us to overtime. They know that Astro is playing underneath on the Solis. Of course, the power of this operator is not just in finding electronics. Solis is actually a really good plant denier as well. Um, can see when that diffuser is being planted. Can't shoot at the same time as having the gadget active, but can use the impact nades. So can just slam them into the ceiling where that diffuser is going down and quite often deny it. And if not, it's going to open up a line of sight. They can flip to the primary weapon 
and then take out the planter as well. So great to keep Astro ah. underneath for as long as they can. Time. Oh, I thought for a second then we were going to see why they then keep on creeping forward straight into that frag grenade, but no. See, this is what I like out of Secret is they are wasting time up here as well. They're putting up these Zara barricades, creating new problems for Virtus Pro this late into the round. That's going to slow them down and impede them to the safe. They've just got to go for it and try and win their gunfights, which again, they are very good at. But Dan, who was on half HP, found out by a headshot from Astro regardless, 4v3. I think again, Virtus Pro are thinking towards that possible plant denial. YZN, Savage managing to get themselves too, but they're pushing underneath to try and take out Astro because they know how impactful that Solus will be from underneath. Dan loses his life and now Pasha might find himself at the same fate as it is. He's going to have to head direct to site. 20 seconds left to go. Very unlikely here. One versus four. Needs to start finding some kills and Secret are going to give him absolutely nothing here. There's no reason for them to. Absolutely not as well. Like They're just holding off to the side here. Why push and try and win some gunfights? Don't pad out his KD anymore. It's already looking pretty stacked up in this game. Seven and two since the rehost. And I guess a small little side comment to make it before we get into our next round. It is nice to see Pasha playing so well again. I was yeah. referenced back in, I think it was late 2020. There was a semi-final that he played in with his team. Yep, being honest, he was clear of the rest of his team. Really kept them in that entire semi-final, but ultimately could not do the business. And I think he's been a little bit quiet really since then. We've seen him have some really, you know, tough performances under Verdus Pro, under Outsiders. And now that the team has changed around a little bit, obviously we've seen much of X empire come into the squad. Now we're really seeing them start to fire up and him really get back into shape. Definitely. As I said at the beginning of the stage, really, you know, I said um, I had a bit of excitement around this team and seeing them, you know, if they could start um, getting back to that sort of form um, after being absent for, for a while, um, you know, particularly the, the ex-Empire players. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's good to see, as you say, and uh, it's looking likely to continue at the minute. It doesn't show any signs of really slowing down. Um, this could be or will be our last round of regulation play one way or another. If Team Secret win it we will head into three rounds of overtime to decide our opening map if Virtus Pro wins it that won't be necessary it's the best of 12 so getting seven on the scoreboard will lock it down um, and will give them the opening map in this best of three so we will see Chalet regardless um, but of course if a team wins the both, both bank and Chalet then it will be done and dusted they will continue through to play in our decider match against the number one seed from the group stage and the loser will head to those last chances qualifiers absolutely let's see if it can get done then if overtime is where we start uh, I tell you what Tim could you imagine six maps of overtime today I mean I, I wouldn't put it past anybody with us casting I mean the thing is like a, a best of five grand final is already a stretch I, I mean maps. we do hold we do hold the record for the we, longest we, competitive we tier one stage oh. game 69 out of 75 yeah, I'm, I'm surprised you never mentioned that before I think it'll be a while till we see that beat, and if I'm honest, it's it, crazy. I game, think it will. It? Yeah, sixty. Was it sixty-nine or sixty-eight? Sixty-nine, I think. I think it was sixty-eight. I think I can count it. I think it was sixty-eight, even okay. though we said it was sixty-nine because it's nice. Um, I think ultimately, though, it, uh, I did three right, three maps score to overtime that day. Yes. Um, yeah, absolutely. Two seven five. But let's get back and see if this one goes to overtime. Savage just running the gun right there. Going to get away with it and live to fight another day, but needs to be careful. He knows that they're in above him already. Dan just doing his due diligence, his Dan diligence in getting in and doing a bit of droning work. It was always previously that was getting on with that. He still is on a drone, but for a different member of his team, I believe that was him around copy. And now that both of his drones are down, his sole duty in this round is to open things up as that thermite or just to frag out. Either are absolutely fantastic options. It's Pasha to find the first onto Groovy, who's getting a little bit cheeky, but there's Savage to find a response and bless him. Exactly as I say about always, it's the second round in a row. He's just come off drones and then been fragged out by someone on the other side. Unfortunate. Very unfortunate for always, but what a pickup um, from Savage there. Just to level things out at four versus four in the round. Going to be getting the hatches opened up with Shepard. He's going to be looking for a three-floor angle potentially here as he um, opens the Janet hatch as well as the soft hatch that's been left inside of sight. Going to clear out one of those canisters. The fire will burn for a time being, but then Dan will be able to also open up the wall which has been left soft onto the plant spot. Yes, they left it soft last time round, but opened up a couple of like small holes onto it, so you couldn't firmly place an exothermic on it. They did get away with it in the end, though, unfortunately, so not quite, I think, what Secret were going for. Savage just being down a distance as well. A great bullet coming through as the nade rolls on through, but it's not going to find his man. Either they drop and go for this push now, or he's back on his feet. Looks like he's getting up for free, because no one's coming in from Garage either. 
I was going to put Savage back onto 20 HP. Um, nothing on Savage to be able Dan to get him anymore. Dan, Dan needs to stop. Dan with a great double right across site. That's 4v1. Surely this is the moment for Virtus Pro. They're going to take Bank Des. They've managed to get that diffuser planted. It's all up to Savage. He was down. He was picked back up. Surely he can't do it. What a story. No, Joystick shuts him down. And Virtus Pro take the opener on Bank with a great 7-5 win. And a great little final play by Joystick there as well, forcing him into an uncomfortable position with that grenade. Just overall a fantastic round, but we spoke about him at the start of it. You've seen him end it as well. Pash has had a great game, but Dan there was the real shining MVP in that last round. Three kills he found from that back angle, including the down onto Garage itself. Slow moving.